polysaccharides are many, many polysac uh, monosaccharides that have been joined together by glycosidic linkages. These are very important for storing energy, for cell wall structure, and uh, there are different types of polysaccharides. Some polysaccharides are just monosaccharides that have been linked together in a long, long, long chain. And some polysaccharides have branches where there's um, many, many, many chains linked together, as you can see uh, at the bottom left. The polysaccharides have many, many hydrophilic groups, but they remain water insoluble because of size. Some of them are water suspendable. For instance, starch and glycogen, glycogen will form colloids and be suspended in water, but they're not really truly dissolving. Uh, some are resistant enough to uh, being brought up into water that they don't even form colloids, and cellulose is an example of that. Examples of the polysaccharides are starches, plant starches, amylose and amylopectin are two types. The amylose starch is a straight chain of glucose that has no branching. Amylopectin is a glucose polysaccharide that has branches in it. Glycogen is an animal starch and its structure is very similar to amylopectin. Cellulose is a polysaccharide of glucose also. Every single one of these polysaccharides that I've listed here are essentially glucose polymers, meaning that glucose molecules are linked to each other by the glycosidic linkages in all of these uh, polysaccharides. Amylose has a specific type of linkage. All of its linkages are alpha 1,4, meaning that you have two alpha glucoses and they are joined by the one carbon on one. The one on the left has a one carbon with a hydroxyl group in blue. and to a 4 carbon on the other one. And uh, so the glycosidic linkage is from the 1 on 1 carbon to the 4 carbon on the other. And it's alpha because the 1 on the left is hydroxyl group down. The 1 on the right is hydroxyl group down also because the neck link linkage will be alpha 1. If I show you a polymer of this, you can see it's all alpha 1,4 linkages, one right after another. That's what amylose looks like. There are no branches in it. It's just a straight polymer chain of glucose linked together by 1,4 linkages. All of the hydroxyl groups are down. With amylopectin, what you also have are alpha glucose again, all of the 1,4 uh, the linkages have the oxygen down, but we have branches that are made on the 6 carbon. That number 6 carbon is that hydroxyl group that is on the methyl sticking up on the alpha ring. So you have a branch forming off there, and in that branch you have alpha 1,4 linkages it's just attached to the glucose in the main chain by the number 6 carbon. Glycogen has a, the exact same uh, linkages as amylopectin, but what you have there is amylopectin has few branches, and the branches are really long, and glycogen has many, many branches, but the branches are really short. So the difference between amylopectin, as shown in this picture, is that amylopectin that we have in starch has these long branches on them, but glycogen actually has lots of little short branches on it. Cellulose is all made from beta-1,4 glycosidic linkages. Cellulose is what we call fiber because 
we have no ability to digest this starch. Amylopectin and amylose all can be uh, digested by us and broken down in the individual glucose units used. But cellulose is made of beta-1,4 linkages and there are no the beta-1,4 linkages are not able to be broken apart by any animals. We don't have the enzymes that can grab a hold of them and break the little glycosidic linkages so that the individual glucose molecules can be used for us. Ruminating animals such as cows and goats and deer, they all have bacteria in their guts that produce an enzyme that will break this so they can eat uh, plant products that have cellulose in them and actually get the glucose out of the cellulose. But anytime a mammal like humans eat cellulose, it will pass through us undigested. And that's what we call fiber and helps keep our intestines working properly. All of the starches like amylose and amylopectin and also glycogen, our bodies can handle and break apart. And so when we eat starches, it's just like eating glucose directly because our bodies break it down into in the individual glucose molecules. So when you eat rice or potatoes or corn or wheat, you actually are eating starch, which is actually just glucose. And this is an important thing to know uh, when considering diabetics because the carbohydrate load, including the starches, is very important for them in controlling the amount of glucose that enters their bloodstream. Be sure to do the in-text problems as you read and do the end of chapter problems that I have shown here. Now, when you do these problems at the end of the chapter, you'll be able to see the expectations that I have for you on understanding. Um, we are not going in into this in any real great depth. It's more that you understand what we put in the online lecture and that you can do the end of chapter problems. I've also posted an online quiz for you to take. Be sure and come for help if you're having any trouble with this.